stream make sure it's live. <clears throat> What's up guys, how you doing? Let's just make sure the stream's live and then we will begin. He's live. Stop my name wrong, but that's fine. See, alrighty, let's do it. Yo, what's up guys, how you doing? We're gonna be live here for a little bit, talking to Adrian about uh, just stuff. As you can see, we are in some park right now, but that's for good reason, so uh, there's not really uh, good internet at the house. So uh, we're at a park on a bench. An undisclosed location. It's Orange County. <laughs> it's, it's way different here in Orange County. Um, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to talk to you for the book. I'm still writing the book in case you guys. He's writing a book about live streaming. If you guys uh, don't already know, so he's, uh, you know, he wants to talk about everything that's going on. He wants to just talk about just. I mean, I don't really know. Just yeah, questions he's gonna ask me. We haven't done an interview on stream for a long time so I wanted to catch up and you know obviously a lot's happened um, <laughs> and uh, yeah I guess I'll start just by asking like how's your stomach because that was the last thing I saw was you rolling around for like 20 minutes after ingesting something yeah no that's fine the, the hot sauce was uh, not meant for I mean it's meant for consumption but the, the amount of hot sauce I had was just way too much and yeah, I don't know, it kind of fucks my stomach up. Um, and you were playing Mortal Kombat. How do you like the new Mortal Kombat? Fuck. Uh, CX in the chat. Mortal Kombat's nice. It's fun. I mean, I don't know. It was it was a fun stream. Besides the hot sauce shit, it was fun. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, what what's going on now? What's your life like right now? Trying to uh, trying to move, package stuff up, trying to move, trying to get the fuck out of this house. Trying to get the fuck out of LA. Just uh, trying to start myself over somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Not surrounded by, you know, fucking homeless people and fucking whatever the goddamn else. Just, you know, just trying to make it a little bit more wholesome for the people I bring around me. Uh huh. So you're, yeah, you're moving out. What, what, uh, when do you think you'll move? I mean, I'm aiming for her, like, next week. Uh huh. Because, uh, I mean, like I said, I'm just trying to get out of this place as soon as possible. I mean, there's no internet. There's no hot water. The water and electricity is getting turned off next week. Okay. Uh, there's no hot water. How are you showering? Just cold water. Just fucking bearing it with some cold, like cold freezing water, dude. Okay. Fucking 30 second showers. Real quick. Wash, wash, wash. And we're out. So, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, the house is... Uh, under Scusty Jobs' name, so he's the one who is supposed to be taking care of all the bills and everything, which obviously, since we're moving out, he is not taking care of the bills, but that's fine. Like I said, it just encourages me to move out even quicker. Mm -hmm. The internet turned off. <clears throat> the internet's turned off. Yeah, yeah, I'm, we're using uh, Wi-Fi boxes okay. to uh, do everything, which is really just AIDS, <laughs> but it's whatever. Um... How are you feeling? Which is why we're at a park. Um, how are you feeling about everything? Like, Ask him how big his wee-wee is. Wanna turn the, the volume up? Yeah. Cause like, yeah, you, you know, this is sort of, this is sort of the end of the, you know, the whole thing. Of, what was the end of the LA era? The LA era, I mean, it's basically a new and, chapter, right? Yeah. I mean, I said this before on my stream, um, until I actually move out, there's not really much I can do. You know, like, it's a really bad situation I'm in. And I'm kind of stuck until I move. You know, stuck with, like, not really being able to do much because of film permits and, you know, housing situation and, you know, whatever else. What do you do all day then? Play RuneScape. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, play RuneScape, and uh, I mean, not really that much. I have so much other shit to do. I've been packing. I've been applying for apartments. I've been, uh, you know, getting everything, you know, taken care of. Trying to close off any loose ends with people. You know, just like trying to chat with people if I have any like issues with anybody. Just trying to like be like, I'm sorry. If there's any issues, you want to talk about it? 
let's talk about it. Um, you know, trying to make sure I have everything settled in LA before I just move and never come back for a while. <laughs> I wouldn't say never come back, but I probably won't be back for a while. I uh, don't think there's much else going on for me in the city. You know, I uh, want to, like I said, start over with my with the, with the people I hang out with, and mm -hmm. you know, just new environment, new things to do, new shit going on. All right. Um, well, I don't. I don't think LA will necessarily miss you, given all the <laughs> issues that. Oh no, they're gonna. About. They're they they would love <laughs> if I'm gone. I guess. I mean, they're gonna have a party. They're gonna have a parade, <laughs> sending you off. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think I was that big of a nuisance. <laughs> Obviously, the uh, the city was getting a bunch of reports about me when I streamed because, uh, yeah. you know, that's why they tacked on the film permit stuff. But well, I'm definitely going to interview them at some point, so I'll, I'll be curious what they say. I'm curious, too, um, on what they would say, to be honest. I'm curious what kind of reports they got, just filming yeah. without a business license or something? I don't know. I, I'll get them, though, because I can, I can file a request. I'm, I'm sure they have, like, a... Um, so where are you going to move? I mean, I would rather not say on stream until I'm actually there, just to avoid any problems that may occur. <laughs> okay. And also just to keep it a big surprise. But you have decided where you're moving. There is three different locations that are possibilities. And whichever location accepts my application for an apartment and... Uh, you know, obviously, it's just the better place to be, then I'll go there. Can you give any hints? No. No, there's just, there's no need. Like, it's just not, like, people will just see when I'm there. What are you worried about in terms of problems that would come from the saying? I mean, I just don't want to, like, say where I'm going and then, you know, give the power to people who want to fuck with me, mm -hmm. like, preemptively by, you know, just trying to figure out which apartment I'm moving into. You know, I'd rather just keep that under wraps for as long as possible. CX in the chat. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, you're, you're moving out of LA, moving to a new place. It's a new chapter, a new, a new... If it's, uh, if the chat's, like, ever effing or something, you just let me know. Um, and... Yeah, what are you hoping to do in this new chapter? How, how do you see it going, and what are you going to try to... Finders full of women. CX. <laughs> okay, that's a real throwback one. What is it? Finders full of women, do you know that reference? No, what is that? It was from the 2012 campaign when somebody asked Mitt Romney why he didn't have so many women in his cabinet or his advisors. And he said, women, I've got binders full of women, like, that he was going to bring on to his campaign. And Did... people made fun of him a lot for that. Okay. I guess you know a lot about that. I don't know why that would, why he would say that. It was just... Well, no, I don't know why this person would donate that. Yeah, because well, I said to... binders. I said they had oh. binders full of reports. Oh, okay. So somebody was just like... That makes sense. That. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, what are you, what are you looking for? looking forward and and i guess like my my question is do you see this as like uh a setback as a defeat um how do you how are you making sense of what what happened in, over the past i like months? to think that everything happens for a reason that might be really like pseudo of me to say but and sort of like a cop-out but i'm gonna go with it because it's optimistic thinking um i like to think everything happens for a reason so it might seem like something that might seem like a setback in the long run, might just be better for me. Not only for my own happiness, but for my, you know, stream as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, because even if Scuffed would have worked out, like, I wasn't really that happy, you know? I was like, it's very stressful. And there was just a lot of shit going on that I had to just deal with. And there's a lot of shit going on that other people had to deal with. And it was just a very complicated... There's just a lot of, a lot of complications. There's a lot of... Uh, you know, my life has turned very complicated very quick, mm -hmm. and I don't really, I didn't really like that. I prefer to keep everything pretty simple. I don't want to have to worry about, like, all this other stuff. I just want to have to worry about streaming, that's it. Yeah. Do you think getting into, into the scuffed stuff um, was a mistake? Do you regret it? 
I mean, it's hard to say because I don't know how this move is going to play out. If the move plays out terribly and I'm just not happy wherever I move and shit sucks, then yeah, that would suck. But if the move plays out well and I'm a lot happier where I move to than I am here, then it would probably be a blessing in disguise. Uh-huh. Well, I noticed that, like, you know, you've had these different setbacks in your life where you got banned from Twitch, you got, you know, um, totally banned. Things, bad things happen, and usually uh, you somehow manage to find a new way forward and find something else. Um, and is that something that you think will happen organically, or do you have any plans specifically for what you're going to be doing to move forward? I mean, I said this on my last stream, I'd prefer to keep everything as wholesome as possible. I don't really want to thrive off of drama and thrive off of, uh, you know, the demise or the mis discomfort of other people or myself. Um, I prefer to keep everything... Scuffed was so scuffed it didn't even launch. How ironic. Hey, I mean, it wouldn't be scuffed if it worked out. Uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I prefer to just keep everything wholesome. Everybody in, like, a, you know, just a, a better mood. <laughs> I don't want to, like, have people be, like, being like, yo, fuck this person, fuck this person, fuck you, fuck this, fuck that. Like, I prefer everybody to just get along more so than drama with, not only with the viewers within themselves, but with me. My, with myself with other people as well you know other people that I you know hang around and that I'm friends with I don't want to have any drama with them whether it makes good content or not I prefer to just have good content where everyone likes each other uh -huh. and why what changed for you because obviously that was a drama and you know like I mean I, I just was a big part of what you were you you told me when I interviewed you the first time, drama equals views equals money, and that was sort of your philosophy. I mean, that philosophy is still true, right? But at the same time, it doesn't make it doesn't make happiness. It doesn't create any sort of fulfillment. It's just successful. Um, but success doesn't always equal happiness or fulfillment. And you know, after the scuff thing didn't work out. I just decided that I wanted to change the approach because I, you know, I'm not happy. I haven't been happy for a while. And I prefer to just try to, you know, take control of my life a little bit and, uh, you know, go down a more, a route that's less stressful and a little bit more, uh, you know, healthy for me. Because <laughs> none of this shit has been, has been healthy for me in like a, from, from a mindset perspective. You know, having to worry about who to trust, who to be around, having to worry about drama, how to worry, have to worry about myself making stupid ass mistakes, and doing stupid ass shit that reflects poorly on myself. You know, that's just all very stressful in it. Uh, you know, I just don't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Do you think what were the CX in the chat doing? Uh, like, I guess I'm I'm curious. Like, when you look back on some of the the things that you were doing now um do you see do you regret them like what you said you said on your japan stream that you made a lot of mistakes and you had a lot of regrets yeah like, what what specifically um was it that you now regret about what you were doing and what kind of content you were making what you know i regret the approach that i took to streaming when uh when i was on youtube I 100%. What was that approach? I mean, more drama filled and more like, you know, chaotic, you know, chaos filled. Because, I mean, I've been, I've been living in LA for two years now. And I don't have many friends. After have this talk with someone that actually wants to listen, not publicize it for everyone. Do you? Things will happen. I mean, this is an interview with Adrian, so. This is meant to be publicized. You know, I think it's good for the for you guys, as the viewers, to see it as well. I think it's just part of the journey. It's part of, you know, the book he's writing. It's part of, a, you know, a bigger picture, so. Do you have people that you talk to about this off stream? I mean, not really. I talk to my girlfriend about this stuff. And that's pretty much it. But, I mean, like I said, I, I've been living in L.A. for two years now. And I really don't have many friends after two years. 
answers. What's your biggest fear as the greatest live streamer in the world? Um, well, well, my biggest fear is obviously getting, like, dying or getting shot or something, but not, other than that, not really anything else. But that's a regret because obviously I would have loved to, if I took a different approach to live streaming when I got on YouTube, I would uh, have had more genuine relationships with people. Mm. And that's what I truly regret because me being in a kind of bad situation I am right now with like having to move and everything and just a lot of the stressful shit that's going on, it's, it just sucks that there's only like two people that I would consider friends here in LA after all these years. And it feels really lonely. So that's, that's probably the major thing. Obviously, you know, all the other stupid shit that I've done, all the other CX in the chat that I've surrounded myself with have tainted uh, my, my image. Right. So that, you know, I need to fix that as well, or attempt to fix. Um, so yeah, you wanted, you wanted chaos, you sort of like let a lot of people in. Let's put the rumors to rest. Are you bisexual? Uh, let's see. Oh, $100 from Matthew. Okay. Hey, thank you, Matthew. I really much appreciate that. Thank you, dude. That's very nice. Ha ha, JK, last dono. You're not the biggest streamer. Don't get too big-headed. You don't even stream. I mean, I... Yeah, I mean, I'm not the biggest streamer. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not bisexual, but I've done some gay shit. <laughs> like, I've done some gay shit. Uh, but I don't... I didn't like it. So, I'm not bisexual. Um. I also don't like... The, uh, if, I, if I would have had more wholesome content, I think uh, the viewers would have been a lot happier too. You think so? I mean, I think so, because I would have been less stressed, which means I would have been more, you know, having more fun streaming. And, you know, because a lot of the streams I've done haven't really been that fun. So it's just, you know, in the end, I would have just been healthier mentally. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in turn, that would have made the viewers happier because I would have been uh, more excited, energetic, and, you know, wanting to be creative. I feel like a lot of my streams lately have not been very creative. Uh, you know, actually, the past couple months haven't been that creative, especially when a lot of it thrived off of drama. Drama's not very creative. It just works. <laughs> like, what, when you, when you say that, you know, you, you've thrived on chaos and you didn't in that content, you, you wish you had done it differently. Um, are there specific things that happened or episodes or, you know, streams that you now regret? Did you plan on getting a new pet? What would you name it? When, when you look back, you're like, damn, I wish I didn't do that. I don't know what I would name it. Um, probably like Patrick Jr. Or, some, or something like my other dog. Sorry, what did you say? I'm just curious, like, what specifically, you know, people that you brought in your life or things that you, decisions that you made, streams that you've done, or content that you've Basic made. background checks of people would help. Background checks. Things that you've done, like, what specifically do you look back now on and, and are like, that was bad, I wish I didn't do that? Oh man, there's so many. There's, there's too many. I mean, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I mean, Horseshoe Bay was bad. I should have never publicized my, you know, relationship issues. I, I should have just turned the fucking stream off. Like, I should have never even streamed that day. I was just obviously afraid of viewer backlash, but that should have just never happened. I should have just took the backlash instead of being a, a fucking idiot by publicizing everything the way I did. It just was awful. And I look back on that now, and I just, I hate it. I, I really wish it didn't happen. I, I really wish... Bone just reported Brent Cat's call is moving with you when you leave LA. Can you confirm this? Brent is not coming with me. Scuffsy Jobs is not going to be living with me. He's not coming with me. We're going our separate ways. There's no, there's nothing more that can come from that relationship. And I need to focus on myself. I'm not going to bring anybody from LA with me. But um, the Horseshoe Bay, Horseshoe okay. Bay was just, a, you know, awful. I obviously just, I felt really bad. Or I feel have, really bad for Caroline. I have feel you really apologized to Caroline? I, I have, yeah, I have. I feel really bad for Caroline. I feel like an idiot for doing that. Uh, you know, and I'm sorry to the viewers that that happened as well because that just looked really fucking shitty. I just was, you know, 
in a weird spot at that point. That sucks. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. Like, I don't really know off the top of my head. That one was, like, the major thing. That, and then obviously the, the drama stuff, and... What do you I, mean I feel the like, drama stuff? Like, have you... I feel like one thing that happened... Well, I feel like... I feel like the CX Network, I... I don't think I should have even made it, dude. Like, there was a lot of cool streams that came from it, but... Actually, I'll take that back. The CX Network was a cool idea. I should have been more selective with who I put on it. You know what I mean? Because it really made... Some of the people that were on the, that we put on the CX Network, it just made the community look like a bunch of degenerates and, you know, like homeless people and shit. It's just... I should have just been more selective with it. I should have never, you know, put people on that were going to cause drama with one another, which... You know, it's good entertainment, but it's just not a good look. Hold on. And, you know, so I probably regret that. Mm -hmm. Or I do regret that. Um, you know, I should have just focused on myself. And, you know, some friends that were, uh, you know, that were helping me with stuff. What about outside of Caroline? Do you regret how you treated anybody both in your life or just people on the street or people that you met? Yeah, I... I also regret, uh, I mean, I, IRL streaming is fun, it's cool, but I totally regret not taking control of the, what happened in it. Like, you know, there's no excuse as to why I would turn on my stream and then when I do IRL, businesses get callers, you know, things like that. Like, there is no fucking excuse for that. There is no excuse to why I was getting swatted every fucking day two years ago. Like, I should have turned the fucking stream off every goddamn time that happened. I should have, you know, if the, if the store was getting callers, I should have just turned the fucking stream off. Or I should have just left or something. Like, I really fucked up in that regard. But, you know, and I always push the, the blame onto, like, oh, those those viewers that were called, the people that are calling, those are just callers. They're fucking toxic. But, like, at the end of the day, like, it's... Like, I, like I didn't... Prom I promoted it, like, indirectly. You know what I mean? I never said, call this fucking place. But me not leaving a restaurant while they're getting callers and I'm sitting there just eating food, like, that's me indirectly promoting it because I should have, you know, just done something about that. And I didn't. And it made IRL streaming as a, as a whole look really, really bad. That sucks. So I'm getting the sense that basically, like, you you feel like you should have been more conscious of your impact on people and sort of the consequence of what you were doing, even if it's indirectly your fault. Because, like, um, yeah, obviously you weren't calling the restaurant, but you knew what would happen as soon as you were walking into a restaurant, right? Right. And I always figured... why would you do it? Well, I always figured it's inevitable. It's going to happen no matter what, so I can't let it stop me from streaming. But, like... I probably should have. I, I, pro I shouldn't have let it stop me from streaming, but I should have just changed up the game plan, the content ideas, the game plan, whatever, instead of just rolling with it, you know what I mean? Because, uh, yeah, I mean, I was obviously a burden to so many different people, so many different businesses, and for that, I'm sorry to those businesses. Like, that sucks, and I definitely gave live streaming in L.A., or, like, IRL streaming in L.A., a really bad look. Um, Sorry to interrupt, TTS has stopped coming out. I've tried to get it back on again, but it's not playing anymore. I mean, it's fine. Don't right. worry about it. Uh, okay, so... Um, and so going forward, one of the things that you're planning on doing is, like, mainly staying inside. And that seems like part... Partially is to limit the impact that you have on other people outside of yourself, right? Well, are you talking about, like, the future? Yeah. That's what I read, I saw on your stream. Well, I want to uh, just not cause a burden to anyone else. That's sort of my goal right now. That's like the main thing I'm prioritizing because, you know, I don't want people to look at me as this like fucked up, toxic, you know, person with like a toxic community. You know, there's a lot of good in my community. There's a lot of good sides to it. And I want to show people the good sides of it, not only the bad sides. You know, unfortunately, the bad sides were 
the things that probably have the most views on YouTube. But views, you know, is it worth it? Like, no, it's it's not worth it. You know, it's you know, I, at at what uh, at what cause? You know, but I mean, my future content, I want to do big events. I want to do IRL, but it's not going to be. I don't think I should do IRL the way that people have been viewing it, the way that I've been doing it either. You know, when I I should tra I want to travel. When I travel, I'll do IRL. Uh, when I'm at my house, I'll do big events and I'll do stuff in the house and et cetera, et cetera. But I don't want to walk around the sidewalk and walk into random businesses and stuff because I've, I've fucked up, you know, the past two years and I can't do that anymore. Theoretically, I could do that, but I don't want to do that anymore because I don't want to be a burden to anyone else because it's just not fair to them. And, you know, hopefully over time that will fix itself where I have the freedom to do that again. Um, without causing issues for people. Mm -hmm. But as it stands right now, I need to keep everything a little bit more controlled and a little bit more uh, creative, you know. I have to be creative with my streams instead of just relying on drama or, you know, just like a random crackhead or something. Or it's like got to come more from yourself. Basically. Yeah. I mean, it sucks because I used, when I used to, before I did IRL, dude, I, was, I did a lot of creative stuff, a lot of cool streams. And then... You know, I saw that a lot of the stuff with, like, crackheads and, like, homeless people and just, like, really wacky, chaotic shit were, was doing really well. So that's just where I started going, you know, because I was like, okay, I'm on YouTube. This is after I got banned on Twitch. I'm on YouTube. I got to just use this freedom uh, that I have on YouTube uh, to my advantage and, you know, try to get as much clickbait and, like, you know, shit as possible. But, like, like I said, it's it's not worth it. It only, it's bad for my mental health and it's bad for everyone else. So yeah, you were, it seems like one thing that was happening was you just got caught up in trying to, you know, grow your channel, get more views, um, basically chase what you thought people wanted. And, and what I what I thought that I wanted. Oh, you wanted that? You, did you well, enjoy, I, I wanted, you, I you want, enjoyed it at first. It seemed like you enjoyed it at some point, like... You, did you not enjoy going to a restaurant and then like all this shit happening and when I happening? when I first started IRL streaming, callers were I, I did say they were funny. Yeah. And that was my first mistake. Should have never done that. But when I first started IRL streaming, people were not so malicious with it. They were like, "Hey, is my autistic son Paul there?" And it was funny. And then it got more malicious and more toxic and fucked up over time. And that's obviously, you know, where we are at right now with if I walk into a restaurant there are, you know people some people are going to call and be like yo he has a gun he's trying to rob you or you know it's just really fucked up shit so I fucked up for that but yeah I did enjoy the the wacky chaotic shit at the beginning but that was you know that was, the start of that was two years ago like I've changed a lot as a person um I you know I, I don't have the same values that I did yeah. You know, I've uh, I've changed myself a lot. Um, well, like I don't like chaotic shit anymore. You know, I, I think it's annoying. You know, I don't want to stream with crackheads anymore. I, I think that's just just doesn't just not fun. <laughs> like I want to I want to hang out with people I like hanging out with. I don't want to hang out with people that are fucking crackheads. You know, I mean whether it's like like I said gets views or not doesn't really matter. I, I don't think. It's not healthy for me. Yeah. I don't think it's healthy for my community either. Well, I know, yeah, I mean, I know just having spent the last four or five months following you around, it's really stressful just to not even be you, but, like, be around you because of all of this, right? So yeah. I can I can see why people would not want to get close to you unless they had something to gain from you, basically, right? And that's what happened. That's uh, a lot of what happened, yeah. That's, that's another regret. You know, I mean, I guess it goes back to it. The chaotic shit gets a lot of views, but then I can't really make any, like I don't, I don't have any peers. You know, everyone that I end up talking to, you know, I have the intention of, um, you know, hoping that this person will add to the content and they have the intention of trying to get something out of me. 
and you know that sucks that that's something I fucked up on because I like I said I at this point in my life I don't really have any peers because why would somebody want to hang out with me right that's gotta be really hard it sucks it sucks but it's okay I mean it's my own doing and you know hopefully over time I can fix that but it's gonna take some time how do you think you can move forward and like have you know peers or friends that don't you don't have that same like toxic relationship with them well I mean focusing on more wholesome stuff trying to focus on more of myself instead of drama is a good start right like for sure um yeah. Um, and and one thing that you mentioned, right, was that the callers got more toxic. And I think, you know, the things that people tried to do to you, viewers or callers, became more scary and dangerous. And it just seemed to get, like, it started out as a joke and then it got very real and scary. What what do you think happened there? Why why did things get keep getting worse? I mean, I didn't put a stop to it. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't put a stop to it. I just let it thrive. You know, I mean, think about it. I mean, two years ago, dude, when I when I got <laughs> when I got banned from Twitch and I was on YouTube, the beginning of the start of like shit getting worse and worse was like, I mean, it got views. You know, I mean, fuck. Like, I never wanted to get swatted or anything. That always sucked because I'd have real, like. I don't know, like, paranoia from that now. But, like, I'm talking about, like, the homeless people and shit. Crackheads and, like, just fucking weird motherfuckers. Like, that shit did really, really well. So I just put myself and surrounded myself with, like, people that, you know, would get that content. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not the people I really want to hang around. Right. Did you feel any genuine connection with these kinds of people though because like I you do sometimes say like oh I I see myself in these people you know these are these are sort of like often people who are don't have a lot going on or or are sort of outcasts and so that was like your tribe almost growing up I've always been an outcast in my school whatever like I never really had friends I was always like this fucking weirdo and uh yeah, I mean, I saw myself with a lot of these guys, and, you know, I didn't just pick random people, you know what I mean, like, I, like, Burger Planet has, like, he's a funny guy, he's a funny fucking guy, he's not a good friend, but he's a funny guy, but then again, I was never a good friend to him either, so, it goes both ways, you know, I mean, the relationship that I started with people was very toxic, and, you know, that's how they treated me as well because obviously you know there's a lot of people I was around that I didn't really want to be friends with but like they're good content so I was friends with them and obviously that started a toxic relationship um and the viewers could see that which is why I don't think it was healthy for my community either because a lot of people end up being frustrated from seeing this you know and then the other half of the people were just like you know just like fuck this person fuck this person like talk you know drama so, um, but did I have any genuine relationships then with anyone? I mean, it's hard to say, dude. I don't think I have had any genuine relationships with really anyone in the past two years, except for like two people. And those people aren't even streamers. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure most of you know who I'm talking about. Um, but even those people, I don't know. I, I feel like some of the, like, even those guys, some of them, like, they really don't I shouldn't talk for them, but from the vibe that I get, sometimes sometimes a lot of these guys that I have had genuine relationships with, they don't really want to hang out with me that much anymore because of everything that's going on around me, and I don't blame them. I don't fucking blame them. Who the fuck would want to hang out with me when I surround myself with what I did? Well, and then people see that I'm having a toxic relationship on my side towards them as well, and it makes me look bad, too. Yeah, I can imagine that would be really... You know, like, if I, if I don't do a favor for somebody, like Burger Planet, you know, that looks bad on me. So, I mean, yeah, I fucked up a lot. 
Yeah. I mean, it seemed like at, at one point you thought that you could basically have your entire life be your stream and that would be okay, right? Like, And I, th I think that is okay really? with some boundaries, with some personal boundaries. I think that is okay. I just think the way I approached it was very wrong. And I'm trying to, you know, restart that so I can have, a, you know, a more healthy relationship with my stream, with myself, and with other people. Um, yeah, that's, that sounds good. I hope, I hope it works. Um, so you, you also mentioned how you had different values back then. What were those values and, and how they changed? Success and money at all costs. That was your value. I mean... When I would talk to you like a year ago, were you, is that where you were at? I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I just wanted to be successful. I wanted people to be proud of me. You know, like I have... I grew up with so much pride, dude. I have so much fucking pride. And I've always just wanted people to be proud of me. So I'm like, how are people... How are people going to be proud of me? if I'm successful, you know, my parents will be proud of me, everyone around me will be proud of me, everyone's gonna be fucking proud if I'm successful. What I didn't understand is that there's other ways for people to be proud of you that doesn't have to do with selling your fucking soul <laughs> and, you know, creating success, content, getting money at all costs. You know, I'm sure my parents will be proud of me if I just had a bunch of good friends around me. <laughs> Like, I'm sure, even if my fucking channel died, as long as I had a bunch of good friends around me, I'm sure my parents would still be proud. And I realized that, like, two months ago. And uh, that's why I've been trying to change uh, some of my stuff. Because my values have just changed. <laughs> like, I don't value success and money anymore. I mean, it, it's nice to be, to have success, and it's nice to have money, but there's more important things out there, you know? Yeah, what was it that changed change your values? I mean, two months, it's not very long ago. Um, was it like something that just, was there like a moment that it clicked? Was it just the, the stress of what was happening? Like, I don't really know when it clicked. I mean, I guess it really started when I, I started getting in like a really, you know, bad situation and I just wished I could talk to somebody, but I didn't trust anyone enough to talk to them. <laughs> That's like a good start. And then from there, just, you know, things just change. You know, and I, I sent a photo of me and my girlfriend to my parents, and they're like, wow, that's so awesome. And like me sending a photo of my girlfriend in Japan to my parents, they had a much better reaction, like they, responded so so much better than when I sent them like a stream with like 20k viewers like you know what I mean like I sent them a picture of a stream with 20k viewers I'm like look fucking this happened this is crazy uh, and then my mom would be like cool but if I sent a photo of me and my girlfriend happy she's like wow that's really awesome I'm so happy for you guys like you know what I mean and <laughs> that really helped me change my perspective as well right so it's kind of the dual thing of, you know, like you do have like a, a relationship now and you really clearly care for each other. And um, so you have something real going on. And and I, I mean, look, I, I had a relationship with uh, my ex-girlfriend too, Caroline. Right. And, but I fucked up that relationship, obviously, very, very much so. Uh -huh. You know, I, I really did not know how to fucking work that relationship into my life at all and with like a healthy balance. And it really fucked... I fucked that relationship up, too. And, uh... To the point where... Like I said, my values were just different when I, when, when I was dating Caroline. So I, I just didn't think anyone cared about me having a healthy relationship. I didn't even think I cared about having a healthy relationship. I just wanted... Somebody I can, like, have fun with. But also, remember, success at all costs. Mm -hmm. So that was just a, a bad balance on my part. Right. But I also, you know, realized that I shouldn't be so prideful because it's not a good look. You know, nobody... I think viewers want me to be human. 
I don't think people want me to be this person who does no wrong and is like, you know, has this, this holds like this high standard of himself. I don't think people want that. So, you know, like I, I'm, I've been working hard at taking a little bit more responsibility and just like grounding myself a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you, uh, and so, so yeah, you, you kind of were at this really low place and being like, how did I get here? What did I do wrong? Basically that you're in this situation that you can't actually. I mean, I knew, I know what I did yeah. wrong. There, there's no questioning about it. I know exactly what I did wrong. Um, so, you know, I don't, I'm not pitying myself. I mean, there's no self-pity. Yeah. Uh, like, what did I do wrong? What happened? Like, no, I know exactly what I did. And now it's time to fix it. Yeah. That's all. So going forward, you know, you, you said, like, there's a lot of good in your community. There's a lot of, you know, creativity, obviously, a lot of dedication. Um, and so what, what aspects of the community do you want to highlight? And, and what, what kinds of things do you want to encourage in that? I don't really know what I want to encourage yet. Okay. I mean, obviously I want to encourage people to uh, just have a good time. I think that's the main thing. I don't want people to come onto my stream and it's like depressing. <laughs> it's like, right. oh, Sam and Andy lost his fucking tent and he's double homeless now. Like, I don't want that. I want people to come onto the stream and be like, wow, that was a cool fucking stream. Wow, that's a good idea. I w- I'd rather have that, you know, those, you know, that mentality instead. You know, I don't want the mentality of like, oh, people are going to, they're going to come on the stream and they're going to like laugh at someone's demise. I want them to come onto the stream and be like, yo, I hope that person does well. Hope that person succeeds. Hope that person, whatever the fuck. You know, there's been a lot of, like, for example, when I, there has been some homeless people I've brought on stream and my community gives them a large amount of money, donates a lot, you know, and they're just like, I hope that guy does fucking well. That's the kind of shit I want to see. And that happens but the other side of it happens was happening way too much more. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this community is very dedicated, and they're very, um, they're very interesting, very very interesting. So those are the, uh, you know, the points that I really want to focus right. on. Well, they clearly have a lot of power, right? I mean, um, they have a lot of influence. I mean, and and because it's around you, you also have a lot of. Influence. So um, that seems to be maybe one thing that you you weren't necessarily taking into account before when everything was not necessarily, you know, oh, it was just happening to me or I, yeah. you know, it's chaos. But, like, you were in control and you could, you do have, like, a lot of influence. I, think. I yeah. I did not realize that before, uh-huh. to be honest. Like, I did not realize the amount of... Uh, Influence this community and myself really had on every, everyone else around us. I really had no idea. I was very fucking stupid in that regard. And I should have been more mindful. But, like I said, I was pretty immature and didn't really want to see someone else's perspective. You know what I mean? Like, I always had a hard time seeing other people's perspective, but I didn't even want to try because I was just like, look at me, this fucking sucks, look what happened to me, this sucks, you know what I mean, but at least, the the thing that makes it different is that if something's happening to me, I'm sort of like responsible for it, so it's, it's, it's not like some random shit, but if something happens to someone else, they have no control over it, so that's fucked, even if it's not as bad of a thing that happened to me. Right, because you chose to put yourself in this position. Right, and I also made a lot of wrong choices. Yeah. Um, so what, uh, so yeah, you, you said you want to sort of encourage people to, to feel good and to have fun, not drama, not chaos, um, not making people feel bad, basically. But, Let me see. Uh, you're starting to realize things, what really matters, how you... Be you, homie. Fuck sakes, I'm 40 potential. Well, hey, thank you very much, Matthew. The $150 to Matthew. Wow. Thank you very much, dude. I appreciate that very, very much. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, it took a while, but I'm I'm very much trying because hey, 
new state, new me. Isn't that what people say? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't, when I move, I do not want to make the same fucking mistakes that I made. I, I do not. I want to just, you know, live a healthier fucking life. <laughs> and I want the community to be in a healthier fucking position. Even if that means having less viewers. Like, you know what I mean? People love the chaotic shit. That gets a lot of viewers. But, like, that doesn't mean that community is at a healthy standpoint. You know, you can have 20k viewers with a very unhealthy community. And I'd rather have fucking 5k viewers at a health, with a healthy community. I think that is just better. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would love to have 20k fucking viewers of a healthy community. That would be better. Even much, much more so. But, you know... That's, uh, you know what I'm trying to say, though. Yeah. Well, if, if you're not motivated so much by money and success and, you know, these metrics anymore, how are you going to know when, you're, when you've achieved what you want or when things are going in the right direction? Honestly, right now, as long as I'm happy, that's success in my eyes. Yeah. Like, what's success when I'm not happy? Success is nothing when you're not happy, you know? Like, a number in your bank account means nothing. 20K viewers means nothing when you are just unhappy and depressed. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's just not worth it. Selling your soul is not fucking worth it. And selling your soul in terms of, like, doing stuff that I necessarily don't want to do as me, Paul Danino, not fucking Ice Poseidon, you know what I mean? Um, when I stream, I should do what... I should want to do what Paul Danino wants to fucking do. Not just what Ice Poseidon thinks he should do to get more viewers. So, I mean, my, my fucking channel could die. And as long as I'm happy, I would still say that's a success. Do I want my channel to die? Obviously not. But, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, so you're you're leaving, you're cutting ties with 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 uh, Steve Jobs. Are you guys on good terms? Yeah, we're on good terms, but there's just nothing more that's coming out of that relationship, mm -hmm. and I don't really want to. I don't need a manager right now. I don't want a fucking manager. I just want to focus on myself. You know what I mean? When my life is not so complicated, with like so many people in my life and so many things going on, I I'm, I don't need a fucking manager. I can do all that stuff myself um and uh what is the status of like the fbi stuff I mean, that's just a closed book closed book yeah i mean have you gotten your stuff back I haven't gotten my stuff back yet but the case is a closed book i mean obviously they saw that i wasn't spook that that or they saw that i wasn't hacking uh fucking companies and shit, you know, they thought I was this sophisticated hacker that went around hacking stuff. Obviously, they found out that's not the case, and, you know, closed book. I still don't have my stuff back yet. It's a fucking long process to get my shit back, but, you know, I'll get it back eventually, so. Um, and uh, what, what can people expect over the next few days in terms of streams or until you move? What, what should they expect from you? I mean, I said this... I've said this, I think, every stream in the past couple streams. There's not much to expect, to be honest. I really can't stream at the moment until I move, like, very well. Like, I can stream, but it's not gonna, It's not very well. There's not going to be much... There's not much I can do. You know, I can't even stream in the house. I'd rather not do IRL around LA because it's... I don't want to be stream tonight by some fucking guy who's with a selfie stick. I don't want to fucking get callers. I don't want to have to worry about film fucking permits. Uh, you know, I don't know. Until I move, it's it's really rough at the moment. But will you be streaming? I will be streaming. Yeah. It's just not going to be high tier content, and I hope that you guys can understand that. Um, I mean, this is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, this I ain't. We had a this, good conversation. I mean, this ain't really much, but this is pretty cool in my eyes. I don't know. I don't know what you guys in the chat think, but yeah. you know, I think it adds a good perspective. I think it's like a part of the story. You know, a lot of viewers have been following for a while. They probably, you know, might enjoy this because it's just, it all just adds together. It all just comes together as like one big fucking story. 
Well, yeah, I mean, what, it was about two years ago you moved to L.A.? Moved to L.A. like you know, two and a half years two and ago. Two and a half years ago. Were you, I mean, like, how did it play out? <laughs> what, what were you expecting to happen, and how does it how does I it mean, when I first out? moved to L.A., I was only expecting to do IRL streams, grow my viewer account, and, you know, have good content. That's what I was expecting. And that happened. That's exactly what happened. But, like I said, all because that happened doesn't mean, and I hit my goals, doesn't mean that I'm a happy person at the end of it. Like, there's not a, there's no happy ending to this L.A. adventure. Like, sure, I hit my goals, we had a lot of good streams, we had a lot of interesting stuff happen, but I'm left with a very empty soul by the end of it. Well, it seems like you learned a lot, and nobody died. You know, that's the one thing that I just really appreciate is that I fucking, I, making all the wrong decisions has grown me so much as a fucking person that I would have never been able to see if I didn't do all this shit. Having my own network and doing a, a, a lot of the stuff that I've done and seeing a lot of the craziness, like, it has grown me as a fucking person. And I have seen a lot of shit, and I understand so many different perspectives, and you know, that I didn't understand before, and my mind is just opened up, you know what I mean, I'm not so closed in, I mean, I was able to, you know, understand responsibility, and even as a kid, I always had those issues, I would do something bad in school, I would get in trouble for it, I was not a good kid, I was not a good kid in school, I always got in trouble for, you know, because I always wanted attention, because I had no fucking friends, uh, and I never took responsibility when I got in trouble at school, so... I don't know, by the end of this, like, I've, I think I've become a better person, which is, I mean, which is nice. I wanted to ask uh, it, you. It's kind of, it's kind of hard, though. It's, 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 is it? it's still hard. Like, I, I am doing the best that I can, but it is still very hard for me to comprehend, uh, you know, fully dropping my pride. Mm-hmm. I've, you know, been working on it, but it's very hard, be, and, and it's very hard to get out of the self-centered mindset. I've, the way I've grown up, that's just, that's how I was raised. Be prideful of everything I do. And I never had friends, so I was very self-centered. Very like, my opinion means so much more than anyone else's because I was the only person I fucking had growing up. Mm -hmm. So it is still weird, but you know, I have some people around me that are helping me, you know, overcome those issues. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that everybody deals with, not just maybe not to the extreme that you have is being able to take responsibility to see things from other people's perspective to realize that you might have done something wrong or hurt somebody even if you didn't intend to right that's the biggest thing is like you might not have thought you were doing something bad hurting somebody but turns out you did what what um i mean obviously you're starting this process and it's going to call go on but have you learned anything about how to do that how to be more aware of your effect on other people or to step outside your own perspective like I mean I've yeah I mean I'm just gonna I'm just more aware I mean there's no I I, I can't really explain it I'm just more aware of what's going on around me and uh, you know it's something to focus on one one thing I think out of all the episodes that you know, and all of the sort of <clears throat> effects you've had on other people, the one that seems the most serious and sort of like, uh, I guess, um, you know, makes me feel the worst is uh, Arab Andy, who, you know, basically, if you guys don't know who Arab Andy is, a lot of you do. He's this young guy in what, Seattle? Yeah. Viewer, um, that huge fan. But then, because of of you, basically started walking around with the TTS, didn't moderate it at all. I and really fucked that. Walked up. into a building full of students at a university, and a bomb threat went off, and he went to jail. His, you know, his life is totally turned upside down. He can't go on the internet. I think he's out, but you know, it, it, he's really fucked. Um, I think I think yeah. about that sometimes, Adrian. Like I, and that was your, you know, that was that was that happened because of you. Yeah, that, that's my doing. Like, I should have, you know, like I said, just take taken a different approach to IRL streaming when I when stuff started getting really out of hand. 
even before that. Like, Arab Andy literally happened because of me. And I didn't want to ever admit that before because it's just like, that's awful. But, you know, because of me being careless, that leads to other people being careless as well. And, you know, thank God, you know, I never got into any issues like Arab Andy. You know, I never did TTS in public. Like, I did TTS in public s sometimes, but, like, I stopped that very quickly because there was nothing good that ever came from it. Uh, so... But he was sort of thrown into the deep, right? It's like he, he like yeah. started from zero and all of a sudden was in the most intense. Yeah, he went from, like, no viewers, like 2,000 viewers, just like that, and he had no experience in streaming whatsoever, so how's he supposed to know that doing this is a bad thing? I mean, it seems like common sense, but when you're, like, in the moment and you have 2,000 viewers, you're kind of clouded by by that. And, uh, you know, if, if I, I really feel like if I would have just taken a better approach to IRL streaming and not been so careless, other people like Arab Andy wouldn't have been so fucking careless. You know, if I would have just been like, don't ever fucking do this, don't do TTS in public, this and that, like, people would have... You know, Arab Andy wouldn't be in jail. You know? Like, it sucks, because he looked up to me. He looked up to my streams. And I just was a very bad influence. And that led him to down a dark path. And that goes for a lot of people. You know, no one as severe as Arab Andy, but it goes for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Right, a lot of people were following you down this path without the knowledge, and also without getting the rewards that you were. The only thing I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just grateful that I had the experience in live streaming. I built myself up very slowly from nothing to bigger and bigger. So I had a little bit more experience to understand that, oh shit, okay, let me not do certain things that are going to get me fucked up or like in trouble or, but you know, a lot of this, all those guys, they don't, they didn't have that experience. They're just thrown in the deep end and, you know, that sucks. Um... All right, well, is there anything else that you wanted to add or you wanted to say? Um, this is probably our last on-screen interview before you're in wherever city you end up. I don't really know. What does the chat have to say, Michael? Um, they've mainly been supporting the... They're saying how this is like probably the realist that they've heard you be for a long time, and they're kind of supporting this personal development. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying. I... I, I know it's it's I have been very fake in the past, but I hope you guys understand a little bit more why. Like it just you know I fucked up with a lot of shit, and I just it's hard to admit that sometimes. How will, how do you think? Because it does seem like now that you're you, you're having a change of heart, you're saying that what you've done was fake and sort of you regret it. How how can people trust you now going forward? That you know I mean you're not just gonna in a two months say oh actually like. I regret this, you know? I mean, I don't really expect people to trust me, but, you know, with time, it'll be fixed, you know, hopefully. Um, I mean, shit takes time. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. I mean, no one has to trust me, you know? I would say, look at me as a streamer and, you know, don't get too attached until you, you know, think it's a good time to you know, from the actions that I've shown. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. But I, I do I do know that there's a lot of good in this community, and there's a lot of good ways we can show that. Because I it hurts me, dude, knowing that I've grown something for the past two years, and a lot of people outside this community, like, they're either scared of it, want nothing to do with it, or they just think very poorly of it. Think that we're a bunch of degenerates or whatever. Like, it sucks. Like, I, I hate that. You know what I mean? I'm not proud of that. I've always wanted people to be proud of me, but I myself am not proud of that. Like, I don't want to have people look at my community and look at myself as just being this thing that they avoid that causes chaos and burden to the rest of the world. You know? But with time, it will all be fixed, hopefully. We'll see. Is there anything that the chat wants to add, though, on the phone there? There you go. Oh, we missed a bunch of the TTS as well. Do you want to read through? Yeah, I'll read through them. Let's see here. 
SJ's name has been ruined by the community. If you and him are over, then he's no longer managing another streamer. Are you sure you're in good terms with him? If you're, if you really are done with him, I mean, we're in good terms, to my knowledge. Um, whether or not he works with another streamer, I don't know. That's really up to him. That's nothing I care about, to be honest. Reminder, Adrian, this sack of human garbage used. Countless people like Salmon, Andy, etc. for content without compensation. Now he's upset and crying because some of them used him for content hypocrite much. I mean, Salmon Andy is a homeless guy who ended up with a MacBook. And he could have ended up with an apartment if he was smart with his money. So he did get stuff out of it. I know you won't see this until later, but please don't be so hard on yourself. I think people have taken advantage of you to get what they want. But they, you were too generous. Hang in there, dude. Oh, I'm not being hard on myself. I'm just understanding my mistakes. But thank you, dude. I appreciate that. I think your ticket to happiness is going back to Twitch. You're a live streaming pioneer and made it possible for so many others to succeed. You're a part of the fabric of the culture and deserve a chance. Well, thank you, Truth. I appreciate that, homie. But that's just, you know, I don't think that should be something I focus on right now. I need to just focus on myself. Like the shirt. Thank you, Cosmic. Is this thing on? It was not. You're a cool ass dude. Any life decisions you make should come from you. And only you. Much respect. Thank you, homie. What's this whole symbiosis you're talking about? You made the streams toxic instead of just giving your fans solo streams. You got lazy and your ego got so huge you thought you could ditch streaming by making a network. And for that, I'm sorry. I, I really fucked up with a lot of that shit. The way you and Sam ended kind of bummed me out. I think he genuinely tried to be your friend. He just screwed up and made a mistake. Do you guys think you'll ever be friends again? Um, well, I'm moving out of LA, and like I said, I don't really want to take any LA stuff with me, so I don't, I don't think so. Maybe we'll talk here and there, but you know, we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna hang out or anything. It feels like your approach to streaming was selfish, and you looked at other streamers in CX as your own personal assets instead of human beings or friends. You've been the source of your own demise. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, it's true, <laughs> you know, uh, and that's what I was talking about with. Uh, a lot of the relationships I started with people just started off toxic, so, you know, when I move, I do want to make sure I have more wholesome, genuine relationships, and that's going to come from me. Let me see, you've had no content since Hawaii, no stream since Jacob left, fix your shit or quit. Uh, thank you, dude. And then you uh, you quote the uh, one a shooter, a mass shooter. Okay, thank you. I'm glad that you are here, dude. What flavor of jewel do you smoke? Uh, this is banana. Adrian, you know this guy is a pathological liar. What's the point of all of this? Thank you, dude. Bone just reported on Brent. Yes, that's the old shit. Thank you. That's all I had. Uh, yeah. All right, well, I mean... I guess, uh... It's been an interesting few months. I moved out here to do this book, so I guess I'm stuck in L.A., but I actually like it, so... Well, I mean, uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this interview. It's been interesting, for sure. Hope you guys uh, got a little bit uh, of perspective from this and uh, have some sort of expectation on what's going to happen until we move going forward. Um... Yeah, I mean, I applied to a bunch of apartments, so hopefully they get back at me with uh, a quick move-in date because I'm trying to get the fuck out of here ASAP. Like, I do not like where I am right now. I'm trying to fucking move and just start a motherfucking new everything. So we'll see how it goes. But until then, we're just in a really weird spot, so hope you guys understand. Um... All right, well, that's uh, going to conclude this very short and brief live stream. What did this say? Don't scam, please. What? Uh... Oh, it was uh, before. Let me show you. Okay, PM me dicks, homie. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that very much, dude. All right, let me see what you say. Can I still come over to jerk you off? Of course, dude. 110%. All right, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Y'all are fucking real. Or y'all are real ones. Uh... 
Am I gonna stream tomorrow? I mean, pro I'll probably do like a, a some something. I don't know what, some kind of sh something short or whatever. I don't know. I'll figure something out. I don't really know how, like what to do to be honest. So I have to figure that one out. But I appreciate you guys very much. Um, yeah. Hey, all the ones that stick through with me through all the bad and all the good are the ones that are real and the ones that are good. So I very much appreciate you guys. But with that being said, I'm going to conclude the live stream here. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys, and we will see you later. Peace, guys.